Well, welcome to another silver update. And uh, on this silver channel, I'm going to keep interjecting other types of videos on how to do things, you know, portable electricity, water, health, how to kill all kinds of diseases, all this type of stuff. Because I know it with a lot of people, well, basically the people on YouTube that are following silver are more into physical silver, which means there's a mistrust of the financial system. And, you know, I'll tell you if there's a damn good reason to mistrust the financial system because just recently, you know, what happened with MF Global people, you know, John Corzine and company, nothing really happened to them. It was just due to sloppy counting standards. Uh, there was no real wrongdoing. Well, so much for the fiduciary responsibility to, um, you know, your clients. So, um... You know, that also puts a red flag out for me because I stated I'm not going to stay in these brokerage accounts forever. I know that. And, you know, I know Gerald Salenti got a little emotional about, you know, he should have been, when um, he had his money. Well, it wasn't exactly in um, MF Global, but MF Global took over the entity that he was had his money into. And basically, uh, they did a margin call on him. And you heard, I don't know if you heard the story, but basically that's... He got very upset because he lost. He initially lost the money in his account. I think he got it back, but he was predicting that all these brokerage firms were going to go down, which was an emotional call. But I don't think that's a bad prediction. I just think you know it's not going to happen so super fast. You know, he was talking in the beginning of 2012. But I think he's basically right. I think he is. It's just that the sky doesn't fall as fast as a lot of people think. Now, um. Just to cut right to the chase, where do I think silver is going to actually peak out? I mean, when? I mean, when? What time frame? I think it's going to be more like mid-2014 to late-2015. Uh, I'm thinking this rally is going to keep going like crazy. You know, I'm looking at the silver-gold ratio here. It's still dropping, which means silver's, gold's moving up, but silver's moving up a lot faster. Now, also, a word of caution. Now, like I'm saying that when it gets down to about 31, I'm going to start selling significant amounts. I'm assuming that's going to be about between 60 and $75 per ounce. But, you know, I'm really going to look at this ratio more than anything. And, you know, there's actually a lot more movement that can go up. Silver can has to go up a hell of a lot more. I know it's at... $33 and you know or 33.56 and you know people are excited about that but people were down in the dumps when it was down at 33 or 35 so you know when it broke below 40 so it's got a lot more room to move up but it has moved up a hell of a lot and the reason it moved up I'm just gonna put it they are expecting Ben Bernanke to do QE the way he's been talking and actually the main consensus is this coming September 12th, which I think is uh, Thursday, um, it's it's going to be when Brendan Bernanke announces, um, you know, QE3. So I don't know if he's going to do this or not, but that's the expectation, and that's why everything's moving up. You know, I'm a little leery about this crap because... This guy's thrown curveballs at people before, and you remember what happened at the end of February. If he says something like, oh, well, we could put it off a little bit. Now, there's a bunch of conflicting data out there. I think the jobs report that came out this Friday was looking really bad. You know, it, it, was, it was horrible. So he's probably going to do it pretty soon, but maybe he might not do it on September 12th. Now, I put out some stuff about... Not that I take this super serious about 9, 9, 12. We had the Illuminati countdown clock and all that type of stuff. I just put it out there as a curiosity. And I don't know. I mean, hey, for all I know, 9, 9, eight, well, actually, it's almost 9 o'clock East Coast Standard Time. It's supposed to be when it ends. You know, maybe that's when the devils will light the fuse and something will happen. I don't know. But... I do have a suspicion about 9-11-2012, which is coming up pretty soon. So, um, you know, that's on Tuesday. So I guess the 12th is on the, uh, actually the Bernanke meeting is on a Wednesday. The 12th is on a Wednesday. But I have a suspicion about the 11th. 
And it's not something that I want to get into giddy rumors or cause any kind of fear or panic, but I think if something happens during that time, 11 years after 9-1-1-2001 and also on a Tuesday, that would be the opportune time probably to buy, you know, or maybe the day after. Maybe that will cause markets to sink. I don't know if this is going to happen. But I got my eye out. I got I got a feeling they're going to throw a curveball. And this rally is going to get, it's not going to get derailed before silver goes up to break some new record highs. And it's not going to get, and that's not going to be the all-time place where silver is going to go to. But the way things have been going, there's going to be a little bit of a setback or hit kill up or something. That's what I'm thinking. So uh, I'm not playing around with leverage. I'm pretty much all invested in silver. And hey, you know, I guess it goes up, I make money as far as theoretically. So um, I want to point out, though, that this game is going to be a tricky game, quite obviously. And if silver gets up to new record highs, 60 to $70, and we're looking at this ratio getting down around 30 to 1, it might go to 28 to 1. I would sell a portion of the silver, although I know that's not going to be the all-time high. I'm estimating that silver is going to peak out mid-2014 to the end of 2015. And it just by cycles. I'm just going by cycles. It takes a few years, two or two and a half, two to three years. So it's going to take a couple years from now, two to three years, before it gets up to its high again. And then it pulls back. That's what's going to happen. I'm simply going by that because everything really is a rough estimate. I mean, it's kind of crazy to, uh, you know, split the hairs on the, on the details and the numbers when it's not an exact science by any means, you know. So I'm assuming that this next wave is not, it's probably, we're probably going to, if we see this go up a lot faster than expected, breaks a record high, um, I have to go by what, you know, the other guys are saying, like Mark Farber, Jim Rogers, and a lot of top people are talking about as a pullback in the global economy in, say, around between starting, say, March to June of 2013. So if you see silver up to 50 bucks an ounce by the end of the year, maybe it's going to go higher. I think it'll go a little higher than that. But it'll probably pull back. Watch that ratio. Watch that ratio. Now me, I am too fearful of selling even half silver. I don't think I'd even sell a third. But I'm going to sell some. I'm overly bullish on the metals myself. So I'm trying to give you some good advice here because I know what these silver guys, are, you know, these, they're going to be saying $150 an ounce before it pulls back. And I don't know about that stuff. But eventually, it's probably going to go to a couple hundred bucks an ounce or more probably and that really depends upon many 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 factors but you know if they default on a debt it's you know if you look at what happened in Russia and stuff like that well considering that all countries are in debt you know they're just it's I don't think silver is going to take off is to the astronomical uh, predictions of so many people like thousand dollars an ounce two thousand dollars an ounce I don't think it's gonna go there and there's a number of reasons and I um, some of those things are if it was that high we'd have a 99 percent recovery rate you know people would be taking silver fillings out of their teeth or some garbage you know I mean it would be ridiculous they'd melt down all the silver spoons and forks and everything else uh, all the computers out there, no matter how much little bit bits of microscopic silver on them, would be recycled, and they'll be finding ways to do without it. Whether they say it's impossible or not, they will. Necessity is the mother of invention, so that's why. You know, I know some people totally disagree with me on this, totally, and they get really mad at this stuff, but. If you look at all fundamentals as far as what happens in developments in industry, you know, there's always a way around something. When people are pushed right to the wall, they come up with ways that you never thought of not to use something if it gets too expensive. So what I think is going to happen is there's going to be a panic into silver due to the financial problems that are going on throughout the world, which I think are deliberate. They're deliberate. They're, they're playing a game. The debt game is so they can introduce a new financial world 
global system, whatever the hell it's going to be. That's that's the game. But um, I'd be I'd be very worried about getting caught on the wrong side of this whole equation because um, I don't know. I I can't really totally pass judgment on all the silver bloggers. I don't know what their game is. I mean. But I see things other ways around. I very much am for Willis on the metal. But I don't want to pop anybody's bubble with expectations of, you know, $500 to $1,000 an ounce silver in real dollars. That's nuts. That ain't going to happen. Sorry. Might happen in inflationary dollars, but I don't think it's going to even happen in that kind of dollars. I think two, three, I don't know. It could possibly go that high, but it's going to have to be very expensive world to live in for it to be going that high too because everything's going to be going up so um you know in during that in, in view of that light i'm going to keep putting out a lot of other videos on how to do things to have to be self-reliant because you know i think about it we have some of this catastrophic financial collapse well you better be self-reliant anyway because um you know looking at these shiny silver coins you got around ain't going to help you they're not going to jump up and make the tools work and everything like that. They're not going to plant food crops for you. They're not going to, you know, put a roof on your house. They're not going to fix your car. They're not going to fix plumbing leaks. They're not going to do any of that stuff. So I'm going to keep introducing different things. Now, there's one place I know I like rich silver. I do this all, I do this pretty much every day is I take some colloidal silver every day, and I make this stuff quite often. So, I mean, that's a good usage, and I put some videos out on that. But... I like the approaching things from the cheap, practical, financial angle. Like, uh, I'm going to probably put some things out here about motorcycles because, uh, believe it or not, a lot of people are going to start getting into this because of the ridiculous price of gas it's probably going to go up to. and uh, It's a cost saver. Not to use it all the time, but on occasions when you don't need a car and don't need to um, get too much or whatever, you know. Um, and I'm also going to get it from the angle of not the uh, flashy chrome uh, plastic people on bikes, whether they're on Harleys or Japanese bikes, because um, I can't stand that stuff. And um, if you look at the people that are in Asia that ride motorcycles, they use it for transportation. It's a basic thing, and they're hardcore riders. So I'm going to get into some of that type of stuff, too, and uh, show a lot of how-to things in a very practical way. You know, not buying special tools and all this kind of garbage because, uh, you know, that's just how I am. I will not spend money on anything unless I have to. <laughs> that's just the way I am. And um, it's smart. Believe me, it's smart. You know, I, I just hate that stuff with too much flash and stuff like that. But uh, coming up this week on uh, September 12th, I guess that's a Wednesday, um... There's the expectation that Bernanke's going to announce QE3. Somehow, I got a. I mean, it's coming down the road pretty soon. I think Silver's going to still hit some record highs here this year, probably. But he can disappoint the markets or something. Again, he could. He could. These guys are great at throwing curveballs at people. So, like, you know, as far as leverage, I'm nervous to get on leverage. I'm not getting on leverage for freaking Silver unless. I see the world cave in, you know, for a couple of days, and it goes down a few bucks, then I'll get on it, because then I realize, if that happened, then he has to do QE3. That's a clear signal.